Now, since we now created a couple of pages, let's talk about now navigating between pages, right? We don't really want to let's go back here. We don't really want to like write here and then navigate to a customer page. So next you have optimize navigation. To link between pages, we traditionally use what? An anchor tag. At the moment, the sidebar links use anchor tag elements. So let's go ahead and take a look. So it is already there. Now let's go which, which element is actually using. Let's do an elements check here and take a look at this one. Let me just make this maybe a desktop version. And here, if you see that home, is actually using an anchor tag. We have our invoices also anchor tag. So let's say if I click on here, so let's say, let's refresh the entire page, close this. Now let's click on the home and notice what happens. Invoices, customers, you see that entire page actually refreshes. If you use a regular anchor tag, it's going to refresh the entire page. So in order for us to make our application even fill more faster, Next.js, they gave us a component called link. Now link component, link between pages in our application allows us to do client side navigation with JavaScript. So to use the link component, let's go ahead and open our UI, go to our dashboard. And here we have something called nav-links.tsx. And here is, you see that the links is an array of some objects named home, href dash, dashboard, we have some icons, right? And at this moment, we have a tag right here. And then links is coming from this links, the array that we created. Okay. And in our, in our JSX nav links, we are just mapping through that array, getting each link, we are creating a link icon, and we are returning an anchor tag with that link icon and the name with a P tag. So first of all, let's go ahead and import link from next link. And now simply just change the anchor tag to this link and save it. And then I'm going to do invoice. You see the page doesn't refresh. Take a look at here. Customers, invoices, homes. It doesn't do a full refresh. We also do inspect. Take a look at element. It still renders an anchor tag. Now, to improve the navigation experience, Next.js automatically code splits our application by route segments. Now, this is different from a traditional React single page application. In React, where the browser loads all your application code on initial load, splitting code by route means that page become isolated. If a certain page throws an error, the rest of the application will still work. All right, so something happens in voices, it's not going to break everything. All right, it's only going to break that particular component. So furthermore, in production, whenever link components appear in the browser viewport, Next.js automatically prefetches the code for the linked route in the background. So by the time the user clicks the link, the code for the destination page will already be loaded. And this is what makes the page transition near instant. So if I click on here, we go to home page, invoices go to invoices, and then customer go to customer. But from the navigation itself, it doesn't really tell me which link is active. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. To do this, we need to get the user's current path from the URL. All right, so here you can see which page are we on. So Next.js provides a hook called use path name that we can use to check the path and implement this pattern of showing active links. Now, since use path name is a hook, any type of React hook, we will need to turn navlinks.tsx into a client component. So if we ever want to use a React hook, we have to turn the component itself into a client component. So that's why Next.js is very versatile because you can use it as a server component, you can use it as a client component, so make it as a hybrid system. We want to, at the very top, we are going to just say use client. That's all you need to do. It's that simple. You say use client is going to be now client component and you'll be able to use all your React hook. So underneath this, let's go ahead and import that hook we talked about, which is going to be use path name that comes from next navigation here. Let's go to our function here. We are going to create con const path name is equals to use path name and we're going to invoke that function. So now we can use the CLSX library we introduced before, right? In our CSS styling. 
So conditionally apply class names when the link is active. When link.href matches the path name, the link should be displayed with blue text and a light blue background. Let's do that, okay? So whenever the link.href, which is current, is matches with the path name. What we're gonna do is inside here in link. So let's get all the class name because we are gonna be using uh, the CLSS function. So we're gonna do uh, curly brace. And inside here, we're gonna say CLSX and it's going to auto import for me. As you can see here, import CLSX from CLSX. That's good. And it's going to be a function as you know, and this particular function is going to take the first one is your default class name string. Then the next one is going to take an object. And here, what we want to do, we're going to write background dash is going to have a sky. Let's do 100 and then text text blue. Let's do uh, 600 on this one. Path name is equal to link dot href. Let's see, we should see some changes. As you can see here, we are on customers. You're already looking at this one. Customers is now blue and a light sky light blue is the background. Invoice, home, there you go.